In this section we'll be creating the UV maps for our project. But before we start creating the actual maps, let's take a look at Moto's UI and discuss some of the tools that we'll be using in the project to create our maps. Now as we get into the creation of the actual UVs, I'll not only explain how to create the UVs, but also, and more importantly, I'll go into detail about why we create the UVs the way that we do. Alright, so what is a UV and what are UV maps? Simply put, UVs are a way to project or to map a two-dimensional image onto a three-dimensional object or surface. Now, that image can be artwork or a photograph that we import or a procedural texture like a grid or dots or some other pattern from Moto's procedural library. Okay, so let's take a look at Moto's UI. Here we are in the UV tab and it's a dedicated viewport just for creating UVs. Now on the left hand side we have a lot of the tools that are necessary for creating UVs and that's a really convenient thing to have. The most important tool that we'll be using, or I should say the main tool that we're going to be using, is this UV Unwrap tool. Now when I select that tool, the tool properties for that tool will come up and they'll populate down here at the bottom. We have some settings that we can adjust and we'll talk about that as we get into the project. Down here below we have UV Relax, which we'll also be using and that will, as the name implies, help to smooth out or to relax the UVs. This is a unique viewport for creating UVs and so we have a 0 to 1 space on the U and a 0 to 1 space on the V. So whenever we create a map it's going to populate in this section. There are a couple of options that we have and I'm just going to click on that options button. Down here at the bottom this is a good feature. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. It's called show distortion. Once we get into the actual project that'll become more important about why I turn that on. It's a, it's a visual aid that helps when we create our maps to check areas that have distortion or areas that don't. Alright, so we're going to leave that on. Now if we, if we want to bring in or, or attach rather two different UV islands we're going to use the move and sew tools. Below that we have edit UVs. This is where if we wanted to copy UVs from one UV map to another that's how we would do it. So cut UVs or copy UVs we can even delete UVs from that section. Below that are our UV maps. If we have a mesh layer selected and we have a UV map on it we have access to it here so that name will populate over here, under here. That's, that's just a convenience that we have. The 2D viewport right here, this UI, or this uh, UV viewport, we have access to all of the modeling tools, all the sculpting tools, the action centers, and the falloffs that we are accustomed to using when we create the geometry in the 3D viewport or the, the perspective viewport. Those tools may or may not be represented over here, but we do have access to them. I just wanted to remind you of that. So on the right hand side of the UI, we've got our item list, the shader tree, and our clips as you would expect. Below that we have our properties, channels, display, and our lists. The list is what I want to bring your attention to. So under here we have our different maps. We have a UV map, and that's really what we're going to uh, be working with when we're creating our UVs. So we'll twirl that down and if you select the UV map that's associated with this geometry layer you'll see that now the UVs are going to populate over in this section. So we'll talk about what this noise is in the back as we get into the project but just to highlight if we go from each mesh item that we select those UVs are going to populate over here and then we can of course navigate in this viewport just like we do in this viewport or any 3D viewport or perspective viewport but this is just going to be flat. With this texture layer selector this text this is just the name of the UV map that we create. If you right click on that you have some options. We can delete, we can rename that map, we can copy it, we can paste or we can clear it out. The last thing I want to mention is the exporting of UVs. So if we create a UV map and we want to export that map to work with it in Photoshop, which we'll be doing, then we'll want to go to 
texture to export UVs to EPS. So that's another thing to take note of. That sort of summarizes, gives us kind of an overview of the UI and some of the tools that we'll be using. It's my goal by the end of this section that you'll have a good understanding of how to create the UVs and why we make the certain choices for creating our maps the way that we do. We can start anywhere really. A lot of the geometry that we have is going to require UV map but let's start with something simple like her dress and then as we go on and get into more complicated areas say like her, her face or her hair we'll have a little bit more confidence with the process because we'll be more familiar with the tools and how they work. First thing we'll do is I want to just to highlight a few things about what we have so far. So if you select the UV map that's associated with our dress item you can see the leftover UVs from the cylinder that we created that we used rather when we created her skirt. So we added to and deleted from that cylinder geometry. So this UV map even though you can see that most of the geometry is represented here this is just leftover. Okay so that's going to go away here in a minute. It is labeled texture but I want you to take note and I want to show you what all this noise is here in the back and basically what that is is all these other meshes or a lot of them all have UV maps that were created when we created the geometry and so they're all labeled texture they're all sitting on top of each other right now they're not active but they're labeled texture because they're all texture that's what's back there right now again once we start to create our maps that stuff will go away what do we do first well firstly let's just talk about what it is that we want to accomplish by creating this UV so whenever I'm creating a UV for say like a garment like a dress or you know pants or a shirt I try and think about in real life how it's going to be constructed so we'll with the skirt we'll probably have a seam like on this side and then a seam on that side so that if that fabric was cut out that's generally how it would be constructed in real life let's go ahead and get rid of this UV map and create another one so let's right click on that and just delete it Hit OK click new map call this dress Hit OK now we're going to use the unwrap tool alright so keep those edges selected so we'll select unwrap and down here below just for demonstration purposes I'm going to lower the iterations to one I'm going to start to drag out that UV here in just a second Initially, I want to think about how this is going to be projected. So we'll go to initial projection. Moto likes to know how you want this thing, what the initial projection type should be. Okay, so we have some options, planar, cylindrical, spherical, etc. I've had some good success using group normal. So that's typically what I always will use. And so that's what we'll use today. So I'm just going to click and drag in the viewport and you can see the more I drag, the more iterations go up. And then you can also see some of those colors. So we have green, red, and blue. I'm going to continue to drag. We'll get to the point where, say, about 190 iterations. It's, we, could go, we could drag more, but really it's not going to resolve much beyond that. So those colors, the green is good. The red and the blue show a little bit of distortion okay so you can see that we don't have a lot of red don't have a lot of blue just a little hint here and there of red and blue this is a really good map All right so the better your geometry the better results your UVs are gonna be this is upside down so I'm gonna select that I'm just gonna hit E I'm gonna rotate that I can rotate it over here just as easy 180 degrees now what I want to do next is to select these get them close enough to each other. I don't want to overlap them because later on I might apply a displacement map to sort of break up this silhouette. I don't know that yet but I tend, um, you know, I tend to sort of build things in a very neutral way so, so later I decide to create a displacement map or you know, make another decision about the texturing at least I have UVs that are clean they don't overlap. I'm going to scale these up because I want to fit them just inside the UV 0 to 1 space and you can see that we've done that here. I'm just going to tidy this up and just move this over to the middle. Okay so we're in pretty good shape. 
So when we apply a texture here, we're going to have a unique pattern on the front and a unique pattern on the back. The next thing I want to do is to label or just assign a material mask or a material to this dress. All right, so we can do that by hitting the M key. Just call that dress. Just accept the default there. And you can see that we have a material mask created in our shader tree. So now that what that's created, I want to see an actual texture on here. Okay, just to check for distortion. So if you hit F6, it's going to bring up your preset browser, and you have access to a lot of different UV images. Okay, it doesn't really matter which one you use, you know, whatever you feel like. You can find that under assets, under images, and down here you'll have a section, you should have one called UV. With this mesh layer selected, with this UV map selected, you can just drag it onto that material and it'll populate right onto our UV map. I'm going to clear that preset browser out. So now just let's just have a look at what we've done. Okay, so we can see that we have this image selected, so it's going to populate back here. And let's just turn this off temporarily. So if I highlight, let's just say that polygon, we can see this polygon is selected, and it's the same polygon that's here, but you can see a similar pattern. Okay, it's, it is a representation. This is a representation of this. I'm sure that makes sense. All right, so let's check the seams on the side. You can see where we've decided to create a seam on the side here, how that's going to look. I think that's pretty believable in terms of, in a real world, how that skirt or dress would be constructed. And I'm pretty happy with that. But we're done with this one. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so let's move on to the legs. Now, these legs are symmetrical, and we don't need to UV both of them at the same time. We only need to UV one of them. So let's just delete one and work on just this one. I'm going to hide my background images, or background geometry rather. And you can see when we pull down the geometry into the boot, we're left with uh, these long polygons right here. So I'm going to just cut that up a little bit with a couple of loop slices like we've done before. All right, so this is a little bit more balanced out. And the next step that we're going to do, there are different ways that we can approach unwrapping a leg that's uh, cylindrical. All right, so let's take a look at that. First off, we've got this UV map that's left over from the geometry that we used when we first created this leg. So that, that's going to, let's just clear that out. It's going to clear it. I'm going to rename that. Just call it legs. Now I want to create a seam here. I don't want to create it in a really obvious place. So let's just find a place in the back. I think that's going to be a pretty good spot. And we're going to use a new tool. And I don't use this tool that much, but for a cylindrical unwrap, it's a really great tool. So we'll definitely use it. Hit UV peeler and we'll click in the viewport. So we'll, we're presented with these little widgets that we can rearrange and, and things. That's good for some initial shaping, but we don't really know. Uh, I mean, we, we can see that we have a little bit of distortion, but we also have a lot of green. And you remember, green is good. All right, so I'm going to hit the space bar to drop the tool. And before I go any further, I'm just going to material, material name this leg. So let's do that. Let's hit the M key, and we'll just call that legs. And, choose its default. So now we have a material mask called legs. Well, I want to bring this UV checker pattern back into the legs material. So I'm just going to drag that up into here. All right, but right now, if we have this texture selected, if you go under the properties, you can see that it's currently targeting the dress UV map that we made. All right, let's just change that to our new UV, which are legs. And you can see that immediately that texture is going to populate in our new UV map. So I'm going to scale this, this up a little bit to make our checkerboard pattern a little bit smaller. And I think it'll be a little bit more obvious where the distortions are and what we can live with and what we can't. So you can see right away that we have some distortion around the knee. And then in the back, we've got our seam. And this is a little severe. All right, it's coming in a little bit too 
too much of an angle. So I think we can do a little bit better. Well, we already have a map, then I think it's a pretty good one to work with. I'm just going to rotate this around just so that we have a clear top and a clear bottom. Let's work on getting some less distortion around these areas. A good tool for that is this UV Relax tool. So let's select that and down here about 300 iterations or so I'm just going to click in the viewport and you can see that it's changed our UVs and it looks like it's changed it for the better which is a bonus. Alright so let's look at the knee you can see there's a lot less distortion here these squares look a lot more unified and in the back you can see also this re has resolved a good bit so there's a lot less of this severe angle okay so I'm really happy with the way that that's looking we're gonna have a seam and if we're gonna have a seam it's it's best to just sort of tuck it in so sometimes I'll tuck it in in the back sometimes I'll tuck it in on the inside of the leg just to get that out of the camera camera view so that's good we've got this leg done now I do want to fit this UV map into this zero to one space and we have a tool for that. It's called Fit UVs. So make sure that Keep Proportional is selected and then just hit OK. And it does a great job of just putting it, fitting it into this zero to one space. All right, so we've got one leg now. Because I want a mirror copy of this, it's easily done by hitting Shift V. I'm just going to make a mirror copy of that. Hit OK. And so now you can see that our UV map has turned red. Well, let me just point something out. That doesn't have anything to do with distortion. What it has to do with is that they're overlapped. So I'm gonna turn off this show distortion uh, option that we've had on just so that you can see that. All right, it doesn't matter if this is on or off. You can see that that's red, but I just wanted to clarify that that's not showing distortion. It's showing overlapping UVs. Now in this case it's just fine because we that's what we want. We want a mirror copy of one leg and the other leg. But just so to clarify even more I'm just going to pull this UV map out so you can see that where they overlap that's where you get the red. And then that really wraps up so to speak <laughs> the legs. Let's move on to the next part. Alright let's move on to the scarf. So right now we've got two geometry layers that have the scarf geo in it. Let's uh, combine that into one. So with both of those items selected, let's right click and go to merge meshes. So now we have just one geometry layer. Very good. We also have a texture UV map that is left over. So we're going to get rid of that. So let's delete that. Create a new map, call it scarf. And then we also want to material name that scarf. Just accept the defaults on that. So while we're at it, let's move that UV checker pattern up into our scarf material mask. And then we want to retarget, or we want to target that pattern to the proper UV mask, uh, ma uh, map. So right now it's targeting legs. Let's select scarf. All right, so now we're in a good spot. We don't have any UVs yet, so that's not wh that's why we're not seeing the pattern populate. Now we've got two different shapes to unwrap or to create UVs from the neck shape and then this back piece. We're going to do those uh, slightly different. We're going to hide this one because we want to work on the neck first. With our scarf layer, our scarf UV map selected, I want to create a seam in the back so it's hidden. And let's go with our UV peeler again. We've had some good luck with that. So when you click, we select that tool and you click in this viewport, you're presented with some a projection and then you have these little widgets on here that you can scale and or just manipulate the UVs. All right, that's a nice convenient way to work. So what I want to do is to use those widgets to basically establish the the general, the height and the width of these squares. I want these these squares to be as evenly as as even as possible with each other, All right? So you can see there's still a lot of distortion, but this is sort of a process. So let's just go with that. All right, so let's deselect, 
And now I'm going to run the UV Relax tool. The mode set to Adaptive, and in about 100 iterations, I'm just going to click in the viewport to see what we've got. Okay, so you see a lot of that distortion really resolve. All right, so that UV Relax is a really nice tool. Just scale those UVs up, just so that we can see this pattern a little bit differently. All right, so there's a lot less distortion than we had initially. And I'm pretty happy with that. We've got a seam in the back that I can live with. But I think as far as that goes, that part is done. All right, so let's just move this out of the way. And we're going to hit U to bring this back. And we're going to hide that mesh layer. So hit it, sit, um, that mesh. So hit H to hide. Let's see. This should be centered. So if this is not centered, make sure that's centered because I want to work in symmetry. So let's just grab those edges, double click on that, go down to the bottom, and let's double click on, let's see, just that edge. And I also want to click right there on that corner. You don't have to, but it's kind of a a detail that I like to do. So when this is unwrapped, it's really, really flat. Let's go to our unwrap tool. And this time we're just going to use group normal. It's going to click in the viewport. And you can see now we've got those nice clean UVs. I'm just going to orient this correctly first. So hit E. So this is straight up and down. I'm just going to move these together. Okay. Now I'm going to hit U to reveal my my other um, geometry layer. Now we need to size these appropriately. Okay, so we're not going to touch the geometry. We're just going to use the the um, UV map. All right, so let's do that. Let's grab those and we'll scale those up. I'm going to hide my selection over here so we can see the scale properly. Sort of get a good vantage point to get a so we can look at both the scarf in the back and then the scarf around the neck. So I'm just going to scale that up. And you can see that the pattern's going to get to be close to what we want in relation to, I'm just trying to match up the, the size. Getting there. And I think that looks pretty good. All right, so now we've got a successful unwrap of the neck piece and a successful wrap unwrap of the this back piece. Let's fit these down into this UV space, zero to one. So hit fit UVs. Okay, I'm just going to move this. Make sure that that doesn't overlap. Now, like we did with the legs, I want to copy and paste that. So we'll have two different little strands back there. So copy, paste, and then we'll just move that over. Whoa, we're in symmetry. So let's turn symmetry off and just move that over out of the way. Okay, so just like with our legs, we've got these, this red UV, these red UVs, and that's just overlap. That's not distortion. Okay, I think we're ready to go. That wraps up the scarf. All right, so now let's start to work on her boots. Just like the legs, we're not going to need to do both of them. We can just do one and then mirror a copy over after we've got our UVs. So I've worked a little bit ahead and I've established a material mask for the upper part of the boot and then also for the lower part of the boot, as you can see here. I've also created a UV map for the upper part of the boot and I've moved our UV checker pattern up to that material and then the texture locator which is right there, you can see that we have this UV map targeting our boots map. So now when I'm looking at the boot, I'm sort of evaluating how this would be, you know, created in real life. And so I think that there's going to be a seam right here. And I really want to make this a little bit more obvious. So I'm just going to make a model change. I'm going to add a loop slice in here. So Alt C and just put just one little loop slice in there to tighten that up. And I also want to 
scale this in a little bit. So let's just hit R with those edges selected. It's going to scale that in slightly. And I like that a lot better. Okay, it's a lot more intentional. All right, so now we're ready to do our UVs. Anything that you don't want to have UV, you can hide. Okay, so we're going to select those meshes, and then we're just going to hit H, hide that. We can also hide polygons if we don't want those to be part of the UV. So now those, we're just going to hit H to hide those. I'm going to double click on that edge that we want to have a seam on, and then double click on this back seam. I'll probably double click on that and, and get that into the, get that cut too. All right, so now we have our edges selected. Let's go over to our unwrap tool. And again, we're gonna use this group normal setting and just click in the viewport to see what we have. You can see that it looks pretty good. We have a little bit of this distortion in the toe and you can see that represented here with our red. There's a little bit of a distortion here, but that's negligible. I think this is good enough to work with. I'm just going to orient these first, just so that my checker pattern is here straight up and down, sort of runs kind of more like I want it straight here on the boot. I'm going to do the same here. I'm just going to, I'm looking at this middle line right here. I'm just going to line that up. I kind of like that. That's good. Makes sense. And this inner part, I don't really care so much about, so I'm just going to sort of ignore that for now. We have a little bit of a distortion in the toe, but we can we can adjust that, so let's do that. What we're going to do is select that, select that UV island, and then we're going to hit Shift H, and it's going to hide unselected, so we, we can really focus in on this. Now, what can we do to eliminate that red and that distortion? Let's just grab that's what I want. Q to drop the tool. Let's get our sculpting tools. So just with the move tool, let's just start moving this out a little bit and see what we get. Shape this a little bit. Still some pretty good amount of distortion right there. Let's see what the UV Relax will do for us. All right, so let's hit UV Relax and click. You can see that that's really resolved a lot, a lot for us. So we may not have needed to do that sculpting of the UVs. There's still a little bit of a distortion right here, but I think I can live with that. We're not going to apply a certain pattern to that. It's, it might be a noise or something. I'm not quite sure just yet. But I'm pretty happy with that. Just gonna get rid of our sculpting tools. Hit U to unhide the geometry that we've ha that we have hidden. And let's just take a look at the map overall. You can see that we have pretty good uniformity in terms of in terms of that checker pattern. I'm pretty happy with that, and I can live with a little bit of distortion right there. If that bothers you, of course you have some. You have some options. You can bring back your sculpting tools and you can use these to bend and pull and you know do whatever you want to, to sort of fine tune that if you like. But I think I'm good with that. So now all we need to do is copy that over. So hit Shift V and then hit Apply. And we've got two UV boots. Next thing I want to do is just scale this up. So double click on that and double click on that. We might as well double click on that. And we can scale this up a little bit. So with an automatic action center, we can position that widget wherever we want. Just scale it up. Something like that. Or we can pack UVs. Okay, we're gonna lock stacked. So if we have UVs that are sitting one on top of each other, that's a probably a better option. Let's just see what that does for us. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. I think we can move on. 
Now let's start working on the UV maps for her shirt. But before we get to the actual creation of the maps, I just wanted to point out a couple of things about the geometry that I changed. So before we had the outer shirt and the undershirt connected with geometry. So I just decided to take that out. That just didn't really look right. So I deleted that row of polygons and you can see I just extended those edges back up from her undershirt into up under the sleeve of her outer shirt there. And then I just reestablished a just a little inner um, cuff that just sort of finishes that off. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out to you. Now, moving forward, I want to hide the inactive meshes. Just like before, I've um, worked ahead and I've created two blank UV maps for us. So we have an outer shirt and an undershirt waiting for us. We have material assignments to the outer shirt and the undershirt. And we're going to do the outer shirt first. So what I've done is targeted that texture. If you click on the texture locator to the UV map outer shirt. Let's get started with that. I want to hide the the undershirt. So I'm just going to select those polygons, hit H. And let's just see, make sure that we have that selected. Now we're going to use a slightly different method for unwrapping this shirt. Because we made the decision to model her arms down, that made the polygons underneath here a little skewed. And that's okay, I, I can live with that. We can make a good UV map and still work with those uh, polygons. It's still, you know, fairly good geometry there. All right, so I'm working in symmetry mode and this mesh is symmet symmetrical. So I'm just going to, again, just sort of look to where I think the seams of this shirt would be in real life. So that's about right. Now, most likely we wouldn't have a seam on the outside, but I can just tell that we're going to have a problem if we unwrap this with just this one slice, this is one cut down here. So I'm going to show you how we're going to bridge these islands together here in a minute. I think this is a good place to start for us to do an initial unwrap. So let's hop over here, go select our unwrap tool, and then just click in the viewport. And I want to show you something. So if we start small and then we drag to the right to get more iterations and more iterations, you start to see, you know, the UV is going to jump around, but then you also see a lot of distortion happening. More iterations doesn't necessarily mean a better UV. I'm just going to bring this down to where I see more green than I see blue or red. So maybe something about around the 80, 90, something like that. I'm just going to check the model in the 3D view. And I'm pretty happy with that. And now we've got several UV islands here. Let's just change this up a little bit. Now that's upside down. Let's fix that. Just rotate that around. Now we have this part of the sleeve and then we have this part of the sleeve. So let's turn off symmetry just for a second. So we've got those two sections and I can tell that this one and this one are supposed to go together. So let's bring them together. Hit the Y key and just bring this over. Now we have of course access to all of our modeling tools in the UV viewport. So what I want to do, I want to stitch these together. I think this is going to give me a better result. I'm just going to bring these cl as close to each other as we can because I know that this one and this one you can see they match up but they're just the UVs aren't connected and I do want a, a nice seam right there. I mean I, I don't want a seam right there so I want a seam underneath there. Okay, So we're going to get rid of that seam Let's select the edges, just like that, and then go to Averaged with our mo Move and Sew tool. All right, so you can see that now we have a nice, clean resolve to that area. Just going to orient that, the E key, just rotate that around to give me a nice pattern. Let's do the same to this side. Just move this up here so we can work with it. And let's hit the Y key. We're going to rotate this into place. And then just like we did with the other one, just move it into place and sort of 
match it up as best you can just initially like that and I think that's pretty good let's select those edges and again run the averaged move and sew tool and we've stitched that one together successfully okay so you see there's no seam there that's good so let's orient that one too just rotate that around and just move it into place and I want it to be close because I want to maximize I want to get these fitting pretty close to each other then I want to um, uniformly scale them up I don't want them to overlap okay so that's good so hit R for the scale tool and then just scale them up maybe down just slightly just so they fit inside the U and the V 0 to 1 space okay pretty happy with that then just check your model we have a little distortion in the breast area let's see if we can eliminate that I'm okay with it but let's just see if we can resolve that a little bit better we can run the relax tool so UV relax let's just select that one UV relax and then just click let's just see how that did and that looks to be a little better you can see a little distortion up there up there in the, the neck area but it's really negligible I'm happy with that and I'm fairly happy with this over here you can see there's a, they're a little bit long but that's not going to bother me at all okay so let's do the undershirt so we did the outer shirt hit U we have our sleeves right here so I'm gonna click on that and then I'm just gonna hit H I'm gonna hide that make sure that we have the undershirt now selected let's unwrap this guy and I think that is pretty good we're gonna use a UV peeler for that let's just do one at a time so I'm gonna say select that one and then just hide it Come back to edge mode and we have that selected on we're on the undershirt UV map and then just UV peeler let's just click in there okay that's fine and well but we re we need to see what's going on so let's take this material pull it into our undershirt material mask and then just retarget the UV map so click on texture locator and then go to UV map undershirt to I mean oh, outer shirt to undershirt all right there we go now this is a better representation okay so you can see what work we have to do so let's scale this first just to see where we're at I want to sort of ballpark this first I think that's pretty good now I'm gonna run the UV relax on that just to see how that resolves okay and I like that a lot okay very little distortion and I'm looking at the uniformity of those checks and that looks pretty good I'm just gonna take that UV map that little island pull it over to the side I'm gonna hit U to unhide the rest of our geometry I'm gonna select the sleeve that we want to UV and then shift H it's going to hide unselected. We want to make sure again that we're, under, we're on undershirt UV. And just like the other one, I want to get that seam to be on the inside there. Now I could have mirrored the one sleeve over to the other, but I want them separate because I don't know exactly what textures. They may be different. Okay, so I'm just we're just gonna do it keep them separate separate UV islands alright so UV peeler just click in the viewport and just like the other one you can see that maybe we can scale this a little bit just to get the checks a bit more uniform I think that's pretty good. Now let's run the UV relax on it. UV relax. 
You gotta love that tool. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Now let's hit U to unhide our other mesh, the rest of our meshes. Okay, and then now I'm just sort of checking the uniformity. Let me just move this over. Let's just see if these match up. I'm just sort of eyeballing it, and that's pretty close. It may not be exactly perfect in terms of size, but it's pretty darn close. I'm just going to orient this differently. I'm just going to turn this around. Okay, so now we need to fit these into the U, the U and the V, the 0 to 1 space. So we'll go to Fit UVs, Keep Proportional, there we go. All right, so now we've got two UV sets. We've got this outer shirt and the undershirt ready to move on to the next one. All right, so moving up to the face area, let's work on the eyebrows next. Now, just like some of the other parts, we're just going to work on one. So I'm just going to delete one eyebrow. I want a mirror copy of the other one. So I'm just going to select that, and we're going to go to Unwrap. Just click in the viewport. And that's about as easy as it gets, folks. What I want to just to remind you of is that I did set this up. I have a material mask already assigned to it. We have a UV map that was just blank until we clicked on the UV unwrap tool. And so we have one successful eyebrow. All right, so let's mirror that over. So shift V. All right, so now we've got these UVs sitting on top of each other, which is what we want. One for the left, one for the right. Now I want to export this UV map because I want to make like a drawing in the uh, just for the just the shape of the eyebrow so we can get so it's not so blocky at least that's the plan right now so we need to we need to export this UV map let's go up under our texture export UVs to EPS let's locate the folder that we want so let's label this eyebrows all right, so that's it. So when we get over to Photoshop and we get to the texturing part, we'll just reopen that map and do our artwork, and then it will we'll, uh, populate it back in the viewport, and we'll be good to go. All right, so let's move on to the eyelashes. All right, so moving on to the eyelashes, we only want to UV one, of, one set of eyelashes, and we'll just mirror that over to the other side. So we can select the geometry on the, on the uh, in this case, the right side delete it. You can see I have a material assignment made to the eyelashes. We also have a UV map, a blank UV map that I created. So we're ready to go. Really, really simple, straightforward, unwrap tool, and then just click in the viewport. I want to go ahead and rotate this just so that when I bring this into Photoshop, because we're going to create artwork for this, I want this to be sort of aligned. It just, it just saved me a little bit of work in Photoshop. Okay. Pull this up a little bit. Something like that. So we have a UV map eyelashes on this eye. Let's make a mirror copy. So shift V for our mirror tool. Apply that over. Our UV sit on right on top of each other as a mirror copy and we're good to go. Now we just need to export this, so we will export UVs to EPS, eyelashes here, yep, and yep. Good to go. All right, so we can move on to the eyes now. First thing I'm going to do is just to hide the inactive meshes so that we have a we can see the eyes a little bit better. And I don't need to UV both eyes. I can just UV one eye and then mirror that over. So I'm going to select that other eye geometry and delete it. You can see I already have a UV map set up for the eyes, so that's just waiting for us. It's blank at the moment. Let's double click on this outer eye and hit M to sign a material mask to it. Call it outer eye. And then we will hit H to hide that geometry. Now I don't need to UV everything on this eyeball, so I'm just going to select what I don't want and then just hit H to hide that. With that done, we can use our unwrap tool. So let's just select that, hit unwrap. And before we do that, make sure that we have eyes selected or we're gonna, as you saw, have a create a new map, which is what we don't want. 
we want to use the existing map. All right, so unwrap, click it. That looks good. Let's see where the iris is. Just want to show you something. All right, so that's about where the iris is going to be. And then we get to the texturing part. We're going to apply a texture, but I want to have a nice soft transition between the iris and the white part of the eye. Okay, so you can see in this UV viewport that it's really, really small here compared to the white of the outer eye. Okay, so that's not, that's not great. I want to make this iris as big as I can within this zero to one space so that it will have a higher resolution. What I can do is scale this up. So hit R, we're going to scale that up pretty big. So let's, let's just see where we're at. You can see that that's the iris. That's the edge of the iris. Okay, so we can scale. Actually, that's, I think that's pretty good. Okay, so what we need to do is, what we need to do next is just shrink down the outer part of the eye, these edges around here. Okay, so I'm just going to grab those, grab that edge, scale it in. Just, whoa. With an automatic action center, just scale that in. And because this is going, this area out here is going to be white, it's not going to have a lot of detail in it. All right, so we can afford to squeeze the UVs over here. All right, we're not going to be affected. We're not going to see any distortion. All right, so I just want to make these small so that we can, again, fit the iris into. We just we can make the iris bigger. All right, so let's see. If we go. Okay, that's the one I want. I want to scale that one up. Okay, so that's pretty good. So let's take a look now. Hit L. All right, so that's the iris. All right, and, and everything inside of that. Okay, so we can even scale this up a little bit bigger. The whole thing. I really want to squeeze as much I want to make these um the iris UVs as as big as I can within this viewport. So I think that's pretty good. It's a lot better than what we started with. Let's hit U to unhide. And let's see. We didn't label that. Let's go ahead and we didn't assign a material mask to that. So let's just let's do that real quick. So we'll select the inner eye We'll hit M for material mask, and we will go with the name of inner eye. Okay, so now we have an assignment, material assignment to the inner eye, and then hit U to unhide our geometry, and we have a, a material assignment to the outer eye. So we have one copy of the eye. Hit Shift V, we're going to mirror this over. Hit Apply, and you can see as we have done with the other maps, our, we have UVs on this eye, and on the left eye, and the right eye and in the viewport you can see them overlap and that's fine that's exactly what we want it's just a mirror copy now we want to export this UV map so we know how to do that go to texture export UVs as EPS we'll call this eyes alright we're getting ready to start the UVs for her face but before we do that I wanted to bring in the concept art so that we can talk a little bit more about how we intend to use this map. We just sort of have to plan this ahead so that we can create the appropriate map. Now I know that I want to use a skin shader for her skin, okay, for her arms and for her face. I'm not going to apply an existing texture like a skin texture or a photograph or something like that. All I want to do is to, in addition to the skin shader, I want to apply a, um, an image map of just her makeup. So her eyeshadow, the pinkness in her cheeks, her lipstick color. I want to create that in Photoshop and then apply that to this layer mask or to this material mask of her skin right on top of that skin shader. Okay, so I don't need to have UVs, for example, for her ears or her neck. Any place that I need color, which in this case is just right around her face, okay, that's the UV map that I want to create. With our head mesh layer selected, I'm going to hide our background meshes, our inactive meshes. And I know that I don't want, I'm just going to hide what I don't want. Okay, so I'm just going to grow that selection, shift up arrow. 
I'm going to paint select the areas that I don't want. I'm just going to hide those. And then I'm also going to, let's see, take out, say, that big section. And then I'm holding the control key to deselect those. You can see I'm working in symmetry, so that sort of speeds, a lot, speeds up the process a bit. And let's see, let's just take it all the way up to her jawline. Something, whoa, something like this. Okay, I can tell that I've lost symmetry here, so let me just take a step back. I'm going to unhide everything. Make sure that symmetry in the X is selected. Go to this the symmetry tool, click, and then you'll see those dots appear, and then drag to the right. All right, so now let's start. That happens sometimes as you work, but it's good to have symmetry. It just speeds things along. All right, so let's again sort of select what we don't want to use. Just lasso select that. And again, just sort of paint out what we're going to hide for our UV map. bring that up a little bit more something like that and then we'll just break about right there maybe a little bit more I don't need anything more I don't need this to UV anything more than I need alright so those selected I'm just going to hit H to hide those and so we have this cavity in the mouth here that we don't need to UV so let's select that. So that's inverted. So it's this. We're actually looking on the inside. Um, that little cavity there. So let's get a little bit closer in here so that we can see what we want, what we don't want. All right. So I don't want those. I'm just going to hit H. Going to hide that geometry. So this is just going to be the face. We're going to have makeup applied just like we talked about. We have an existing texture right there. Let's just get rid of that. And let's create a new map, call it face. So now we're ready to unwrap. Click in the viewport. I'm gonna accept the default, or you know what we have before. Actually, let's see what we get. If we just start with one iteration, okay? And you can see this resolve get to the point because I know that there's going to be a little bit of overlap in the mouth, which we're going to fix. Let's just see how we can resolve that, see if it helps us. All right, let's just go with that. Okay, I don't really care about the distortion here because we're going to create a unique map in Photoshop that fits these UVs exactly. Okay, but this is a problem. You can see in the mouth, let me just highlight the geometry here so we can have a, a better look at it of what's being overlapped. All right, so I'm just going to select those and hit L for loop. And you can see that that's overlapping geometry. All right, and we really don't want that. So what I want to do, I want to push and pull some of these points around to make sure that there's no overlap. All right, so temporarily with those polygons inside the mouth, selected. I'm going to hit H again to hide that. All right, so that gives me a better starting point. Now I'm going to hit the element move tool, which is T, and I'm going to go about the task just pulling out these edges just to give myself a little bit of a hole in the middle. And we're going to bring back the ge that geometry of that lip in just a minute once we resolve this overlap out here. You really have to sort of get in there tight just to make sure that nothing's overlapping. It'll take a little bit of doing, but the tools work really well, and this element move tool is great. You can click on an edge, on a point, or on a face, and have direct control over it, which is really, really nice. All right, so I'm not really concerned about how bumpy this is right now. 
all I want to do is just make some room for that lip on the inside. Okay, we can smooth this out and we will here in just a minute. Just move this guy out of the way. I'm going to hit U to unhide. It also reveals the rest that we, we have hidden. Okay, so just to get that out of the way, I'm going to double click on my mesh and then hit Shift H here, and it's going to hide what we don't have UV'd. T for Element Move tool again. And let's see, see if we're pulling the right one. Let's just select that edge. And is that on the upper or the lower? OK, that's the lower. That edge is lower. So we'll work with that. Element move. Believe that one. Let's hit T again. Let's just move that up. And you can start to tell when you start separating these out what's overlapping and what's not. So again, don't worry too much about the shape of you know, what it is you're pulling it apart, how you're pulling it apart, because we're going to smooth that out and make that look really nice. The point of this part is just to get, to get our overlaps corrected so nothing is overlapping. Because when we paint a texture on here, we don't want it painting over the same area. Okay, that's going to look weird and not what we want. All right, so we got that side resolved. Let's just get in here and do this side. Almost there. Okay, so you can see we've eliminated the overlap. Now let's work on the smoothness of it because we def definitely need to smooth that out. Okay, so let's select a couple polygons in that loop. We have good clean geometry, so when we hit L, we got a good clean defined loop around there. So shift up arrow, let's grow that selection a little bit and then we're going to run the smooth tool. So shift S for smooth and then click in the viewport and you keep an eye on your iterations down here but for this example it worked pretty well at like around 300 or so. Alright, you can see that now that's pretty resolved. All right, We have good clean UVs that are not overlapping which is the point so I think we're in pretty good shape. Let's bring back our background, I mean our, the rest of the mesh we have hidden just to make sure that we didn't have any missing areas in the UV and I think we're still in good shape. Alright, so there we go. That's going to be our mask uh, or the face that we're going to do use our uh, apply makeup to. Let's export that texture. Go to texture to export UVs and we'll just call that face. So now that's done, we can move on to maybe the hair next. All right, so moving on to the hair, let's just take a look at what we've got and we can make some decisions about that moving forward, about what we need and what we don't. I like the, the hair strips and we've taken some time to create those and they serve really well to break up the silhouette on, uh, on both sides. And I like the way that it's doing you know what's happening and the the results that we were getting from that but I also like this base mesh all right it's really clean the I think there's a lot of possibilities for both and so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a combination of both so we're gonna have this base mesh hair which we're going we're going to apply a um do some image based sculpting so we're gonna we're gonna get to that in the texturing part but I want to, I don't want to hide this completely. I'm going to sculpt on this and then as we need we'll put in, we'll pull in these hair strips to facilitate this kind of breaking of the, um, 
the silhouette a little bit so it'll look a little bit lighter and a little bit more organic all right so we're going to use a combination of both so first thing I want to do and you can see I've split this out so I've got this I've got this hair uh, hair strips on one layer I've got the hair ties on one layer and then I've got the hair on one layer all right so we need UV maps for both the hair strips and the hair so I've gone ahead and created a, a blank UV map for our hair mane but we're gonna do the hair strips first so I'm just gonna hide the the base mesh for our hair and get started with these strips. So we go to the unwrap tool and just click in the viewport. And you can see based on these settings, you know, we can have we can set this down to something low like one and then just drag to the right and you can see it resolve. All right, so I'm just going to drop that tool by hitting spacebar and then go to the UV relax and the mode is set to adaptive. Just going to click in the viewport just to see how clean we can get it but I'm pretty happy with that. In terms of efficiency this is not very efficient in terms of of how we're utilizing this zero to one space. So what I'm gonna do is to pack these together as closely as I can all, with this, all within this zero to one space. So I'm gonna take a few minutes to do that. And the second thing I want to do is I'm gonna isolate these parts together because these hair strips in the back for the ponytail I want to just visually group them together so that when we go to create textures in Photoshop, we, we have a clear understanding of what's going to be in the tail or the ponytail area and what's going to be in the, the, the main body of the hair. All right, so let's just take a few minutes, group these together, and make them as large as we can within this zero to one space. All right, so now that we've taken some time to orient these the way that we want, pack them together to make more, a better use of this zero to one UV space, we're gonna, because we're going to apply some artwork to this, we're gonna create artwork for these individual strands. We wanna, the idea is to create these as, as big as possible so that we'll have more pixel space when we use the, uh, the UV map in Photoshop. All right, so all we need to do now is just to export this. So let's go to, to our texture to export UVs as EPS, and then we will call it hair strips, and then save it. Yep. So let's move over to the hair. We're gonna hide our inactive meshes, and we have two different pieces of geometry, one for the ponytail and one for the main part of the hair. So let's, we have this uh, blank UV map that we've created, just call it hair main. And I want to just split this in half, unwrap tool, and then just click in the viewport. And that's not exactly what I want to do because I don't want to UV that right now. So I'm just going to select that geometry. I'm going to hit H to hide it. Come back to just this, this edge right here is just going to define where we want the UV islands to be. So unwrap click in the viewport and you can see that it does a nice job of just unwrapping this relax that those UVs a little bit more we'll just click in the viewport you can see that it resolves really really nicely let's find the tops I think that's the top and yep that is the top so I just want to rotate these so that when again when we get to over to Photoshop and apply the textures this is oriented the right way. So this is gonna to be top, this is gonna to be top. I'm gonna hit uh, U to reveal what I have hidden. I'm just going to hide, I'm going to select that ponytail. I'm just gonna hide that. And now we're gonna chop this up a little bit because this is a fairly complicated shape. So because we had good clean geometry around there, we can select this edge all the way around. Let's see if that's a good one to work with. I think it is. All right, I want that one. Now I'm going to select right along this part of the hair. Actually, before I do that, I think that I want to have, let me just double click on that little part of the hair right there. All right, so I know I want that full loop and I want the part of this hair right down the middle. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to select two edges along that same edge row and just up arrow to grow that selection in the direction that I clicked. Okay, so we have that seam. That's looking pretty good. Now, back here in the back, I want to find that little pole right there. Okay, it's not super critical that it's right there, but that's what I want. I think it's just going to help with the unwrap a little bit more. I'm going to do the same on this side. Again, up arrow in the direction that you were selecting. All right, so I think that's a good. So we have a, a good start. We have a UV island that's here. We're going to have a UV island that's contained on this side, then one over here. I think we're in good shape. So with the hair main UV map, which is blank right now selected, go to the unwrap tool and let's just click in the viewport to see what we get. All right, again, you can change the iterations around a little bit should you want. Let's just see what we get. Sometimes I'll just go with what's there, but that's not always, or there are these settings that were left over from the previous UV wrap, unwrap. That's not always the best thing to do, but let's just set our iterations to one and then just drag to the right just to see how this is going to resolve for us. And with a few more iterations, let's just zoom out a little bit. We start to get a little bit better results. Okay, almost there. Okay, so I can see that the overlap here is gone. We do have a little bit of a problem here. And you can see that we have some distortion, but we have very little overlap. The only bit of overlap is in this section. Okay, so you can see that right here. And that's just because the geometry sort of overlaps itself right here. All right, so we're gonna have some issues with there but we can resolve that pretty quickly. So what I wanna do, I'm gonna work on this island first. I'm gonna double click that and hit Shift H to hide unselected. So now I wanna eliminate that overlap. We can do it with the UV Relax tool. Let's go to Unwrap and we'll set our iterations fairly low. So let's just set them at 20. Make sure Interactive is ticked. And let's just click on, we're going to do what's called UV pinning. What we're going to do is clicking on these vertices, we want to sort of lock in areas that we like. We're happy with that. I don't want a lot of distortion right there, or, or we're going to interactively pull this around. So and we can click it and then we can sort of pull and remove the overlap and then we'll also be able to affect some of the distortion. So let's do that. You can see the way that I'm working. Because my iterations are low, I'm not getting a lot of movement throughout the entire mesh, and I'm only affecting this UV island. Pull this around something where I'm fairly comfortable with. I still have distortion, but I don't have that overlap. All right, so we've successfully eliminated that overlap, which in this case is the point for that process. Now, let's just run the UV Relax tool. And we'll set this to Adaptive, and then click and see, how, see what we get. All right, so that's pretty good. I like that. There's a little bit of a distortion right there, but that's not, it's not that bad. All right, so I think for a complicated shape, that's actually pretty good. All right, so I'm going to hit U to reveal the other uh, UVs, those that we've hidden. And then we can do the same thing with some of these other UV islands. So I can see that I might want to if you get in real close. There's a little bit of a, you know, the, the redder it is, the more distorted it's going to be, or the bluer it is, the more distorted it's going to be. So using these same techniques, I'm going to go through each of these islands and sort of optimize these in terms of distortion. Once I'm happy with that, then we'll, like we did with the hair strips, sort of pack all this stuff in together 
to optimize our UV map. So let's take a minute to do that. All right, so now that we've taken some time to remove a lot of the distortion in the base mesh for the hair, we're pretty happy with, with the way that it's looking. We've got a little bit of a distortion, a little bit of distortion in some of the areas, but it's not something that I can't live with. I'm fairly happy with the way that it's resolved. I just want to bring to your attention to one thing before we move on, is that I flipped the, or I made a mirror copy rather, of this ponytail from this side to that side. So that's why these are overlapped, and we've seen that before. If you don't want to have the same texture applied to both, then of course you would want to move these UVs out like like that, like we've like we've also done before. From the different vantage points, we're not going to necessarily see both ponytails in the same shot, and we're going to have hair strips that are going to be covering those most likely, or some of them, and so if they are identical, it's going to be minimal, so it's not going to be as obvious. So that's my reasoning behind that. All we need to do now is just export this UV. So go to Texture to export UVs to EPS, and we'll call this Hair Main. So we have an exported UV map that's ready to be opened in Photoshop once we get to the texturing part of the project.